37 years with American Express, 17 years as a chairman and the chief executive officer. He led American Express through two horrible terrorist attacks in New York City and Lower Manhattan, when banks and other large institutions and financial companies were folding their doors and going out of business. Ken Chenault took American Express to be even a stronger company than it once was. Ken, I, there's one thing I had to write down here because he has been uh, acclaimed as one of the world's 50 greatest leaders. Now, that's pretty cool in and of itself, but it's the other people that are in the group that make it really cool for Ken to be there. I'm going to just give you a few of them. The Pope. <laughs> the Chancellor of Germany. Warren Buffett. Bill Clinton. And these two, last two I'm going to give you that I love the most. The Dalai Lama. And Bono. <laughs> When you run in that kind of company, what else can you, uh, can you say about this man? Um, I can only tell you that I asked Ken uh, back in August to be our keynote speaker. He uh, politely, this is the kind of gentleman that he is, he politely looked at his calendar and he could have easily looked at his phone and said, sorry Joe, I'm busy that day. I'm going to be in India or China or somewhere. He didn't. He said, as of now, it's available, barring anything, you know, unforeseen, he'll be here. So he flew in today from San Francisco, tomorrow to India, the next day to China. So this was a little inconvenient as an understatement. So just to give you an idea of what type of a commitment he made to us and what kind of a man he is, that uh, he would have loved to have told me, John, I'm busy, I can't handle it, but that's not Ken. So, without any further ado, I would like to introduce my friend and a great man here to speak to you, one CEO to another CEO. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Kenneth Chenault. to make things happen. But I really had no idea 
that I would go into business because I didn't know a lot about business. What I did know is I wanted to make a meaningful difference in people's lives. And I think what's very important is American Express is in the service business. You're in the service business. And you're making a meaningful difference in people's lives by giving them experiences. And so I had a deep belief that I wanted to be a leader. And I thought maybe I would enter politics. Uh, and I ended up going to college, uh, did pretty well in college, played sports. I loved sports. I, I realized when I was around 17, I wasn't going to the NBA. Uh, so I really needed to focus on my studies. And uh, then I went to law school, and uh, I thought I was going to be a litigator. And I have a very, very good friend. If you look him up, he's a guy named Ted Wells, who's one of the top litigators in the U.S. And he was at Harvard Business School, and he was getting a joint degree at Harvard Law School. And he said, I think you should think about business. And I said, well, I think I can be a pretty good litigator. And Ted said, I think I can be a better one. Well, he happens to be one of the best in the world. And so um, I still went to a law firm. And fortunately, I had a friend after around two years. And people asked me, what was your game plan? I didn't have a game plan. But I did focus on performance. And uh, I was asked to come to this consulting firm called Bandit Company that was just starting up, that was advising companies around the world on business strategies. And I went there for around two and a half years, and people said, well, did you have a game plan then? I said, I had no game plan. It was just performance. But fortunately, I came in contact on a client engagement with someone named Lou Gerstner, who was at American Express, who then went on to become the chairman and CEO of IBM, probably one of the most respected CEOs in the world. And he asked me to come in at a relatively low level position in strategic planning. And so I did that for around two, two and a half years. And I remember going to Lou saying, look, I've been in this job for two and a half years. I think I'm performing. I want an opportunity. And I got a promotion uh, to a business and it was actually the card business of the company at the time. And for whatever reason, I said, I don't think I want to do that. I want to do something more entrepreneurial. And so I had the opportunity to work with a business that sold merchandise through the mail that, in fact, was doing poorly. And one of the things I believe in business is you take chances and you take risks. And you really see if you can bring about change. And so this was a business that was losing money, had around 100 million in sales, and Lou said, I'm gonna close down that business. So I don't think it's a good idea that you go there. And I said, Lou, give me six months to put a plan together for that business. In three years, we grew that business to $800 million in sales. And so I said, all right, Lou, 
I'll do that. And so that really was the story of how I became CEO. But I think what's important, James, is only around maybe eight years before I became CEO did I really think about the opportunity. Because I think what you have to be very, very careful about is just ambition for a position versus ambition to make a difference in people's lives and in fact to make something happen and to try that. That's what you need to be focused on. Well, that speaks to my next question. I was going to ask you what makes a great CEO uh, or a great business leader, and certainly that's got to be the core principle. Right. That you're not just thinking in that narrow way, but you're really thinking about helping people and changing people's lives. Right. right? What else makes a great CEO? So I think what's important, that is absolutely core, but I think what is critical in any business, in any organization, you have to have a foundation of trust. And so for me, what is most important is integrity. Because if you want to create a followership, and the way I think about integrity is the consistency of words and actions. Because the, the greatest asset that you have in business is trust and your reputation. Trust with the people who work with you, trust with your partners, trust with your customers. And so that is core. Second, what I think is absolutely critical is you have to have courage. Because we're all faced with tough issues. We all know we're going to have ups and downs. And so what is your determination that you're going to push through? How resilient are you going to be to those setbacks? How will you overcome them? What is the confidence that you have? And everybody goes through periods of doubt. Anybody who tells you it was a straight line is lying to you. And it's never a straight line. And the issue is, where I judge people, is how they deal with the challenging times. Because that's where character, values, integrity comes through. The next thing that I think is very, very important is you have to put together a game plan. What's your game plan to win? What are your key priorities that you're going to focus on? And then what I think is also very challenging, and people get this confused, you have to demonstrate to people that you care about them. Because here's what's very important in our business. We want enduring relationships. And you only create enduring relationships if people believe you genuinely care about them. But then what is important is you have to be decisive. And that means sometimes you'll make difficult decisions that people will not agree with, that will affect people's lives. But you have to think of what's best for the enterprise, what's best for the organization. And I think that is very important. The last thing I would say is that in the service business, you really have to view yourself as a servant. Some people have difficulty because they want to be the boss. But I tell my people, my job is to serve you. Because if I serve you, the organization is going to be successful and you're going to be successful. And so that means keep your ego in check. Don't get your position confused with who you are. And understand that if you're going to be a strong leader, people know authentic leaders. And authentic leaders care about people. Authentic leaders want to drive results 
and outcomes because they want to make people's lives better. And so what's most important when you look back on your career is what you want to say is not only did I build a good business, but I helped hundreds of people. I made a difference in their lives, whether they worked with me, whether they were partners, whether they were customers. Those are some of the qualities of great leadership. I learned, uh, I learned a term around here from, uh, from Donald Bradley and Andy Coffin, servant leadership. Yes. to the technological changes that are coming along. 
And if you're in a situation, if you find yourself 12 months from now saying, I had no idea that this was going on, you got a problem. <laughs> because your job is in fact to figure out and think through and what is terrific now with the internet is you have an opportunity to find out these things. And second is you have a support structure that will give you the tools and capabilities to learn more about what needs to happen from a technology standpoint. But lastly, what I would say, and this is something that many people don't focus on enough, is personal service is really critical. Whether that is delivered virtually or face-to-face. -face. And so what you need to understand is if you want to have a real connection with your customers, you've got to provide differentiated service to them. And if they feel that this is someone, the term I use, it has my back. That's the way you got to think about your customer. They're going to say, they have my back. They're going to take care of me. They're going to be there for me. You can deal with any technological change. Because what, what I'm clearly seeing in the trends is people are having less confidence that companies have their back. That people will take care of them. And if you demonstrate that you're going to take care of people, that you'll follow through, and that you will stay up on what's happening from a technology standpoint, you're going to create a very, very strong and sustainable business. You know, we were, we were a little ahead of our time back when we started Telco because it's always been at that nexus of technology but also one-on-one -on -one relationships. And that kind of personal service, personal marketing, personal relationship building, yet heavily empowered by technology. So a lot of times the competition that our agents and our CEOs here face are um, consumers' knowledge of websites. But no website is going to send a handwritten thank you note. Absolutely. And no website is going to know that your daughter loves to water ski. And no website is going to take that phone call at 1 a.m. and make sure they get taken care of. Right? Right. So, so what competition? Right? Um, let's turn to uh, the economy and uh, money for a sec. Um, analysts, uh, economists are predicting 2018 will be a boom year. Do you have thoughts on that? What's your view? Yeah, I think, um, I think the economy has stabilized. Uh, if you look at different economies around the world, uh, we're starting to see more growth. But what I would be very careful about is to take the position that we're going to enter a robust economy. I think it will be an improved economy. I think that some people are getting a little bit too euphoric uh, that all of a sudden we're going to see a dramatic increase in the growth rate. I think what we will see is we will see growth, and that's positive. But what that means is you've got to be very careful about how you balance off the investments you're making in the business, the efficiency that you're driving in your organization, the cost controls that you have and need to put in place. Because it's not just about 18, it's about 19. And so what I would emphasize is don't place the bet that the economy is going to just take off. Place the bet that I think the economy will be stable, that we will see positive growth, and that many companies will in fact go on the hope that there'll be a robust economy and they're gonna have issues. What you need to focus on is a balance between investment, cost, 
and productivity. And I think that's very important. Um, true story, Dr. J came to see Joe and I in our office in California in the early years and was one of our more famous tele-travel agents yeah. for a time. He, was a, he had become a real estate developer Absolutely. in the Southwest. And we got to meet him briefly, Terrific. along with Orville Redenbacher, the popcorn guy. <laughs> he was also an Intel Cavalier for a while. Um, well, quite a combination. <laughs> I didn't think he was a real person, actually. Uh, what, <laughs> what a real pleasure and uh, privilege this has been, Ken. Uh, I, I can't thank you enough on behalf of our fellow CEOs here. Um, ladies and gentlemen, James, can I just say one sure. thing? Is really what is important that I will just continue to focus on is one, what you should feel very proud about is the choice that you've made to be an owner and a CEO.